Hello and welcome to Ula Tea Leaf Readings. My name is Lenore and tonight I'm going to be reading your tea leaves. This is a horoscope for Sagittarius. If Sagittarius is your solar, lunar, ascendant slash rising sign, then this is a message for you. All right, let's get started. And so, Sagittarius, our card tonight is the Princess of Wands, which, my goodness, what a passionate, transformative energy. Okay, let's go ahead. We're going to take a look and see what do these tea leaves have to say. And so, if you have not subscribed yet, please think about doing that. You can hit that little bell. It'll let you know when the next readings are coming out. It is free to subscribe. And if you'd like to hit the like button or leave a comment, I would love to hear from you. All right. So, uh, you might hear in the background a ton of crickets. <laughs> <laughs> uh, today might be the hottest day of the year. It's actually not that hot. It's the humidity. It is, uh, I think the heat index has it like, it's like 80 degrees or something. And, oh no, maybe it's like 85. 85 today, but it's going to be over 100 with the humidity. It is thick outside. Let me just tell you. <laughs> All right. So, I'm looking at this and I'm feeling like, oh, and I was saying that because, yeah, if you're hearing the crickets, I'm sorry. They are loud. They're really loud. I'm like downstairs in a basement area and I can still hear them. It's, it's very, <laughs> it's a profound orchestra going on out there. Um, so let's take a look. Uh, where did I see the number? We have it looks like 73 right here, 7-3, okay? Um, we also have a person standing here. You can see the head, you can see the body, you can see they have an eye really kind of at the core of their being. It reminds me of kind of a, a heart, a heart chakra that has a bright, beautiful, open eye right in the middle, okay? We also have uh, the legs, the feet down here. We have, it looks like a little uh, fawn laying down here, a baby deer. We also have uh, flowers, okay? Just growing beautifully. Now over here, I wanna look as well. This all fits in. It looks like we have a person sitting here. You can see the head, the body. They're holding a cup. It looks like they're sitting next to the deer again. You can see the head of the deer, the body. Above their head, it looks almost like they have antlers, but to me, it also reads as these kind of psychic emanations. Now, it also looks like it says G-O, go, okay? I'm looking at this. It looks like we have a, a person here and a person here. Uh, so first, I want to start with this large, large formation. We have magic. We just have straight up magical energy going on. This is a, a person who really, I get the feeling of shaman, uh, a probably practical magic practitioner practitioner or and I'm trying to think like it feels like somebody now we have ceremonial magicians we have uh kind of these you know more academic uh um you know uh what am I trying to think of like uh, like these classy classy high class elevated <laughs> kinds of uh, magical practitioners, right? And we think a lot of this is like, you know, Western Hermeticism, ceremonial magic, um, you know, even uh, some of the Eastern arts. Uh, 
and this is very formal, very put together, kind of maybe even a little bit, um, you know, stuffy as far as we're talking about using actual texts and grimoires and, and whatever and whatever and whatever. Uh, and then we have what is called low magic or folk magic. And that is not to say that it is lower in any way. Uh, you know, I am myself um, far more drawn to practical low magic. So I'm like, that's the one that's elevated. <laughs> uh, but these are, if you could think, like uh, fetish practitioners. Now, I say fetish on here and I don't want it to be confused with anything, but it is a form of of magic, really. It's not to be confused with like adult stuff. It is um, kind of like sympathetic magic where you could think of, um, well, like a voodoo doll, right? This is sympathetic magic to use the, a likeness of something to, uh, yeah, to affect your intentions upon whatever the uh, person, object, situation might be. Okay, so uh, also herbalists, uh, healers. Um, you know, I don't know. Uh, well, like I said, uh, shaman. Um, those who walk between to some degree, you know, even you could say, uh, some chaos and, and, um, reconstructionalists, um, uh, Wiccan and the natural, um, the natural kind of facing, uh, tradition. So well, this is the image I want you to get. This is not somebody who's sitting in some, you know, uh, old library somewhere going over, you know, alchemical texts or whatever. This is the nitty gritty. This is the intuition. This is, I am, you know, in, uh, communications with the plants around me, the minerals, the, um, you know, uh, the, what I call backyard spirits, the animals, the bugs, the, um, you know, everything that's out there, <laughs> everything that's out there, everything we're encountering, um, if we notice it or not, right? And I feel you very locked into this. You are somebody who, and this is the first thing that comes to mind, you draw animals to you. If you have like you're maybe you're out in the country like me or you're in a suburb somewhere that's on the outskirts, you are somebody who has like maybe if you have a yard, right? If you are privileged enough to have a little bit of, um, you know, a green space or trees or whatever, um, animals will find their way into your yard. You might even find like a little a little deer, a little fawn, a little baby waiting for their mother. And just let me say, if you find a baby deer, although this time of the year, they're, they're probably, you know, um, pretty grown. <laughs> You're not going to find too many little tiny babies yet. Um, or anymore. Uh, don't, do not bother them. They sit there and they wait. Their mamas could be gone half the day and they will still return for them. Um, so don't bother the little deer, uh, or any little animals, baby animals. You just let them be, um, unless they're obviously injured, of course. But, uh, yeah, so I feel like the animals show up and they hang around. They get to know you. You get to know them, right? Uh, and that's because they're drawn to your energies. They're drawn to your magic. You are somebody who, uh, walks between right? And you probably have very profound dreams. You probably have a lot of coincidences and synchronicities and this feeling of um, serendipity quite often, maybe even deja vu. Uh, and this is because you are a being that really you don't always fully exist in base reality. You are somebody who has their other foot in that borderland, in that in-between place. And yeah, you're a powerful seer, a powerful manifester. And, um, and 
it all is working with you often in your favor you know depending on where your psyche is at okay you're the kind of person that i think most people right they wake up it's a rainy day and they're like ugh, it's dark it's gloomy ugh, ugh, ugh. it's gonna be a bad day for you and well and here's the thing they're affected by the exterior uh the the conditions of what is outside of themselves or what they perceive to be outside of themselves you on the other hand you wake up and maybe you're having a bad day you feel a little gloomy you know it's maybe getting a little bit worse as, as the day goes on and the weather goes from a pretty nice day to unexpected rain and that's because you are the master of your reality. You are the architect of your reality. You have such an influence on the environment around you, the environment that you are a part of. And so I believe that you really are becoming more and more aware of this and I see the flowers. I see you working towards really growing, growing, growing in the psychic ability, growing in this connection with spirit, being very intentional with it. I think at times you've questioned yourself. You think maybe I'm, uh, you know, losing it a little bit. Maybe I'm reading too deeply into this. Maybe I have this feeling and, and yeah, usually I'm right. But that's just because I'm good at reading the situation. I mean, that might be true as well. But I think a lot of it does. It has to do with the fact that you are very tuned in. Very tuned in. And I see you beginning not beginning. I shouldn't say that. You're fully into. <laughs> you are still what feels like in the beginning phases of changing some profound aspect of your life. And I think that probably this has to do with maybe how you spend your hours. And I'm thinking it's kind of almost like You've decided to go from whatever kind of work you were doing previously to trying to find a way to uh, work in something that you love doing, right? So maybe you are going through a course for like, I don't know, Reiki, right? And you're building up your understanding of how to kind of start a business, a little practice for yourself. And this is hopefully something that you want to get off the ground. Now, it doesn't have to be Reiki, but that's what came to mind. It could be anything. I mean, you could be reading tea leaves. Maybe you're starting a channel. If you are, shout it out. I actually have to do the post here pretty soon. Of, of uh, I like to put up um, a post where everybody can kind of share what your small business, your your channel, you know, whatever, um, your whatever services you have, because I know there's a lot of different kinds of practitioners and people doing interesting things. And my husband and I, shout out to Dove and Serpent Tarot, my husband over there, my husband and I, we take notice, of course we do. And we like to put up these posts because we want to support you and your endeavors as you have supported our channels. And also, I just like to know, what are people doing? I'm kind of nosy. <laughs> what are people doing? Um, you know, uh, what kinds of work do you do? What kinds of things are you interested in? You know, so I do. I see you really, really focusing on growing this thing for yourself. You know, maybe you're getting like your realty license or um, you're starting like a daycare, you know, whatever it is. But I, I feel like it's like 
I've come to this place in my life where I'm tired of doing things that feel like I'm just pouring myself into a bucket with a hole at the bottom. And it's there's a very transient feeling about it. It's not that meaningful to you. And you're tired of living like that. You look at people who are doing things that they're really like not only you know proud of, but they're interested in the work that they're doing they really feel you know good about it they you know even might be a little annoying and always talking about it the ins and outs and this and that and you're like oh my gosh okay we all get it you love what you do we're not all that lucky but guess what you can find something that you do love to do and now maybe it won't be your, you know, nine, your day job, your nine to five at first, because you got to build things, right? You have to, yeah, it's not a, a fast process, is it? But it is a worthy one. It is one that is uh, ultimately, you know, it is something that is an experience. It is a process that I feel like most of us need to go through. We really need to see what it's like to have something of our own, to create something from basically nothing and build it on up, right? And all of the ordeals that involves, all of the triumphs and heartbreaks and frustration, absolutely. I think it's something everybody should have an experience with, okay? Um, now, we have the person down here sitting again with the little deer. And this one reminds me, like I said, it is like a, almost a, with the antlers on top, reminds me of a forest spirit, the hierophant, maybe, well, maybe not the high priestess, but the hierophant and we have, again, that little baby deer. So I see that this is kind of, with the deer, I always think of this as a most sacred moment. We have the most sacred deer. We have a most sacred moment in our journey. When it, the deer is young, we know, oh, it's just beginning. We're just really starting to take notice of our abilities. Maybe they've always been there and we've always kind of, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'm just like a little bit more tuned in or I'm just more perceptive or, or whatever it is. Uh, but it has become undeniable that you have this energy, this power going on. Okay. And Here's the part that maybe feels a little bit difficult is we have two people over here and they look like they're walking this way. We have another person over here that looks like they're walking this way. So it leads me to believe that there might be a little bit of, there might have been some loss. Now, I'm not saying that anybody passed away, uh, although that could be the case, but I feel like it's almost kind of like you walked away from a group of friends or family members and uh, or they walked away from you. Uh, and I think that this is something that it feels devastating. It, that's all I can say is that it feels devastating. I feel like in your mind, in your rational part of your mind, it's almost like, yeah, this is what needed to happen. Yes, I needed. And the, I just, the dove just, and I'm thinking that's how it feels, right? The peace in your life was just knocked right over, right? And whatever was happening, there was conflict, there was disagreement, there was, you know, I don't know, maybe here's the big one. You know, mental health stuff in the family, um, addiction, right? You come maybe from a family that has addiction and, and um, you've helped and you've helped and you've tried and you've tried and it just is to the point where you can't do it anymore. 
you know, or, you know, you're around people who um, are kind of all into the same thing and, you know, they all kind of, maybe they all drink together or whatever. And you're always the one coming around, like trying to like help sort things out and da da da. And, you know, it's like they turn their back on you because they don't want to hear that. And I say this as an, a person in recovery, right? I am, <laughs> I am a person that knows quite well what it's like to be in substance abuse. I also know what it's like to help people who are, you know, trying to lift themselves out of it. And what I do know about people, especially if you have a family that's in active addic addiction, they will circle the wagons, right? To try to keep anybody who's trying to help or change anything or whatever, they don't want to hear that because it really like kind of harshes the little reality that they're living in. And I wonder if maybe this is kind of the the uh, the vibe of what's going on. Now I want to do our radiant or what is it called? The Oracle of the Radiant Sun. I want to do uh, three of these cards. I kind of just want to see what the general energies of uh, the situation are. How are you feeling now? Because I think this is something maybe a little bit in the past, okay? And I'm just going to stop here. I'm going to flip over one. Ooh. Exaltation. Okay, so lift it up. Yes. Lift it up. Yeah, coral. Not surprised to see that one. Indecision. Okay. So, yeah, this feels just about right. Uh, I feel like, yeah, there's kind of this sense of and I wonder if you're the one that kind of walked away at this point. Um, because I feel like through your spiritual work, through really getting connected with that kind of higher thinking, that ability to really tap into those psychic abilities and um, your connection with the divine, it's not that you have lifted yourself above everybody else. Um, it's not that you've exalted yourself above everybody else, but I do feel like there's a sense of moving towards the light, right? Wanting to be around people who uh, maybe are of God, goddess, of spiritual practice, of maybe magic or, or religion, right? Maybe it is. You're, you started going to a, a new church or, you know, a new mosque or, or whatever it is. And you feel different because you are among people who are in their grace. You are among people who are, yes, they're flawed. They're flawed and they're struggling and they're humans and, and all that. But they are looking for this relationship with the divine. They are honoring it. They are devoted to it. And I can tell you what, that's a whole different vibe than being around a family that is quarreling, arguing, determined to misunderstand each other, not listen to each other, find reasons to be mad and to snipe and yeah, you know, um, but here we are. It's hard. It's hard to walk away. It's hard to limit contact. It is maybe one of the most difficult things in life to set boundaries with people who from the jump, there was already kind of a uh, misaligned dynamic or maybe even an abusive dynamic, chaotic, turmoil. Um, you know, and we all have our things with our families, especially our families of origin. There's always going to be, you know, something there. But I feel like this is pretty profoundly unhealthy for you right? And so when we grow up in that, we might not even realize that, 
hey, there are other ways to live. There are other ways for families to uh, interact with one another. You know, um, you know, I even remember when I was a kid, I came from a very um, chaotic childhood, a house that um, and family that they were. Listen, I'm not trying to down my family. I love them from afar. Right. I love and I pray for them. And, you know, um, I have the greatest, greatest care for them. Um, but you know, you grow up thinking that things are normal and then you get out into the world, usually as a young adult, and you start to experience other people's lives and families and, and the way they do things, the way they talk to each other. And, um, I was amazed that there were like holidays where nobody was screaming at each other. Nobody was upset about things. Nobody was, you know, arguing or having like these little spats off to the side of the, you know, and I, I've been to, uh, other people's stuff, but it was pretty much, you know, similar. But then when I got older, um, you know, I don't know. I met people that <laughs> had families that were pretty solid and like, you know, they, and now listen, we all have our problems, but I thought, my goodness, we got through this whole dinner. Not one person called each other a name or yelled at each other or nobody left the table or nobody got like, you know, uh, too intoxicated and, and made a spectacle. Wow, this is weird, you know? And then you have to start to decide, like, what are we going to do here? What am I going to do here? How do I want to live? And what am I do willing to do to get to that place? And sometimes... We have to walk away from that which we know, at least for a while, right? And that's hard. And it's a, it, there's no wrong or right way to do it, right? I know. It's like, the, it's like a person who has been trying to leave their relationship for, you know, a while, and, you know, they say, oh, everything's bad and this and that. And I'm going to, I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave. And, and, uh, and then they're, you know, it goes back to how they, everything seems normal within a couple of days. And then it happens again and it happens again. And it's this cycle. And you think, gosh, why doesn't this person just leave them? Like break up already. It's not that easy. When you're in the thing, when you're in that cycle, it, it becomes your reality. The highs and lows, the fighting and the making up and the, you know, all of that. And it starts to feel like oh, this is all there is, you know, and from the outside, it seems almost kind of demented. But when you are the person in it. It's not that easy to walk away, even when things are really bad. It's one of those things about being human that I think we are. We're so adaptable that, yeah, we will adapt to really bad circumstances and try to rationalize our way through them. And... So I feel you in this indecisive place. And let me just tell you, I understand. I get it. You know, um, I think it's a good place to now, if you have the ability, if you have access, counseling, therapy, you know, I'm always harping on it. Um, <laughs> always saying, you know, if you have access to these kinds of things, support groups, um, you know, even like being in some kind of, uh, like group setting where you're studying, um, you know, whatever it is, your spiritual practices, uh, and so on being among people, like I said, going to church or a temple or mosque or whatever your community might be, uh, or finding a community that feels like a community, right? Actively searching out your people, the people that make you feel 
Well, they don't make you feel. But you come into the situation and you feel something just being there. You know, for me, a lot of times it's been meetings, you know. And I'll, I'll be honest with you. I don't do as many meetings as I used to. I'm almost like 10 years in recovery. And um, sometimes, yeah, I've slowed down. I've been so busy, you know. And I do them online um, mostly. Uh, but... I know that community is always there for me, you know, and I feel, um, I feel like these are my people, even people I've never met. I'll never talk to again. I just know because we understand, you know, how desperate things can be and how, uh, how lost we have been and listen, can, can become once more, right? And, and those are my people. Those are my people. And, uh, and so to find that for ourselves. Now, it doesn't just fall in your lap. Let me tell you that. You're not just going to, um, you know, well, you could maybe manifest. Maybe you are just super powerful and you can. Uh, but you have to go looking, right? You have to be brave, you have to put yourself out there a little bit sometimes. It's worth it. You need something outside of your private dynamic to be able to measure kind of where am I at in life? What is going on here? Is this for me? Is this not for me? All right, let's see. Let's take a look. Now we have the eye again and we have a heart so i really this is the thing i really feel like it is your heart is open your heart chakra open 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 and i feel that this is so much about you you having an openness love devotion for yourself for your own well-being and that you know we're like super conditioned to feel like this is so like selfish i'm selfish self-involved am i a spiritual narcissist i saw that i saw that um term the other day and i thought my gosh really you know uh sometimes we do we have to be selfish to survive not and I'm not saying going out there and taking advantage of people or hoarding wealth or you know resources no I mean sometimes we have to say no I cannot be involved in your dramas no I cannot succumb to this like icky energy this toxicity I have to put myself first I have to make time for myself to, you know, do my, my rituals, my ceremony, be by myself a little bit, go out into the world and meet people that make me feel something, feel connected to something that makes sense. And that might feel really selfish. And if you're a mom, if you've ever been a mom or, or a dad, or a dad, you'll understand this probably super deeply. It is that guilt of putting yourself first. And that, I mean, it never is more highlighted than when you have a kid or kids or, you know. Um, so I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, yeah, this is a time where you are really really uh, doing the dang thing, okay? You are in a process of healing. You are in a process of saving yourself. You are in a process of, yeah, exalting yourself, but not in some profane way, right? It is, it is. It is a process of picking yourself up Dusting yourself off, absolving yourself, and exalting yourself. Lifting, lifting into the sky. 
towards that light. And I love it. I love seeing that. Now we also have the number eight. Seven and eight today seem like really important numbers. We also had a three, I remember. We had seven dash three. Now let's take a look at our gratitude cards. I'm gonna go ahead and just flip through here. We're gonna stop where it feels right. And it says, Col <laughs> collaborative, I can say that, I can read. <laughs> collaborative wonders. I am grateful for the power of unity to achieve boundless success. I am thankful for the partnership of minds, beliefs, and efforts that birth revolutions and collaborative wonders. Practice. Consider the partners in both your personal and professional life. How have they helped make difficult tasks easy and impossible ideas possible? Beautiful. All right. Well, Sagittarius, I'm going to go ahead and tell you I love you because I do and I thank you so much. For spending this time with me. It is always such an honor to be able to bring these messages to you. And if you would be so kind as to like the video, it really does help the channel. And if you have not subscribed yet, please think about doing that. You can hit that little bell. It'll let you know when the next readings are coming out. It is free to subscribe. And if you'd like to leave a comment, I would love to hear from you. Uh, and definitely, if you're new to the channel, shout it out in the comments section. Other than that, I'm going to go ahead again and say, I love you. I love you. I love you. Take care of yourself. And we'll talk in just a few days. Good night.